Very shortly, I think. Yes. <laughs> you guys probably heard me right now. Uh, it is 9.01 a.m. U.S. Pacific Standard Time here in Los Angeles. Monday, January 23rd, 2023 A.D. Quite a bit to cover as well cover as well as hopefully your calls. I wasn't able to get to all of your calls last week, so feel free to call right in. Um, happy Chinese New Year. There was a mass murder on Chinese New Year or around that time from uh, an old Asian man. You probably know more about it than I do. There's also a riot, a mostly peaceful riot in Atlanta, Georgia, over some agitator who got killed earlier in that week. What a mess. Uh, A car was on fire, a police car was on fire, but it was still largely peaceful. Um, The UN, sleazy UN, and the World Economic Forum types want censorship. And the UK is no longer UK, United Kingdom. It's terrible. There are there is one story where this guy talked about arrests for hate speech, Posting Snoop Dogg rap lyrics on the internet if you're not black. <laughs> and she was arrested. I think she was released, but, or I don't know what was, what, what's going on. But there's all kinds of mess from evil people. And some of the useful idiot blacks are pretending that, oh yeah, it is racist. To post rap lyrics. <laughs> N-word. It's, it's, it's dumb. And I have... A pro-vax clip from a guy, a Canadian male, who is going to put all you anti-vax tards in your place. I shouldn't say tards. Sorry, kids. Or adults. All that and your calls. But anyway, guys, let's get right on with the show! One, two, three, four. Oh. How you guys doing? I am fine. Just gonna check my Odyssey. Yes. This morning on Odyssey, O D Y S E E dot com slash at Jesse Lee Peterson. Uh, the audio wasn't working, but it's working on Hake, and I was able to reset it and get it working on JLP. By the way, Odyssey, we got on Odyssey because of the censorship, and Odyssey has not censored us too much so far. I'm also streaming, I think, on uh, Rumble. Shout out to the Rumble crew. I owe you guys to read a super chat that came in. I will get to that. Appreciate it. Uh, I am remiss in not reading the super chats when they come in. I'm like telling people, oh, did you know you guys can super chat on Rumble? And then I didn't even read it when it came in. What a mess. I also have super chats on uh, Streamlabs as well, of course. If you say also and as well, that's redundant, huh? Shameful. Uh, I'm wearing one of my Forest Home t-shirts. Uh, one of you guys was like, get Hake some new t-shirts. I've been looking at that shirt for years. And yes, I have owned this shirt and worn it for years. But, uh, happy Chinese New Year, everybody. Oops. Chinese New Year. They call it Lunar New Year, because I guess it has to do with the moon. Moon is lunar, luna, at least in Spanish. And whatever, it's Chinese New Year, (laughs) even if you're not Chinese. It's the year of the rabbit, which I heard that that is an excellent album by Sufjan Stevens. It's different from his other stuff. It's all like electronic Fancy, dancy, weird music. I've played Sufjan Stevens's or Sufjan Stevens's 
uh, Christmas songs during Christmas time and after Christmas time, let's be honest. But yeah, welcome to Year of the Rabbit, according to Comedy Nonsense Network. C- celebrations in many parts of the world will, will occur over several days, referred to as the Spring Festival collectively. Spring Festival? Wow, they're really ahead of themselves. At least in my spring doesn't start until... January is not spring. <laughs> but anyway, January is barely winter. It's like the beginning of winter. But anyway, they call it that. One Lunar New Year tradition involves eating what are known as longevity noodles, a ritual that can be traced back more than 2,000 years, says CNN lovingly. You know who else can be traced back 2,000 years? Jesus. Do you love him? Commie Nonsense Network? No, because you're atheist. And you only like Chinese because they're not white. And they're commies. I'm going off. Read your Chinese zodiac. Zodiac? Doesn't that sound like astrology? Fortune for the year of the rabbit, says Commie Nonsense Network this morning. During Lunar New Year, many people... Take a look at these Chinese Zodiac predictions to see what may lie ahead for you in the coming months. Who knows? Who knows? Maybe yours will be oddly accurate. Probably written, this report from Commie Nonsense Network, (laughs) because all of you guys read Commie Nonsense Network along with me, right? So it's very pertinent (laughs) to your life, because you have to read this. Actually, you get to listen to Hake talking about it. Um, probably written by a woman. Women are so silly, aren't they? (laughs) No offense, we love you ladies. This is not hate speech, it's hate speech. But women are so silly, they'll be atheist, and then they'll, like, go to a fortune teller. (sighs) Dumb. (laughs) Sorry kids, adults. Sufjan Stevens is good, says CJ O'Connell. You would say that, you Irish male. (laughs) <laughs> no, I, I agree. He's pretty good. There's certain th- stuff that I like. He's talented. Hassan even likes him. Nice. Uh, yes, I see your, a pat, your account throwback. I will get to your Super Chats, guys. Um, and they promote horoscope stuff. And What year was I? Was I year of the chicken? I, I don't know. Middle of 1981. Anyway, I don't know. One of my friends was m- Year of the Monkey, I think. Rooster. Anyway. 12-year Chinese zodiac calendar cycle, represented by 12 different animals, the Chinese zodiac signs. Um, there's a, I know there's a dragon... I think there might be a snake, but maybe that's the dragon. I know that there's a rooster, and I think, and there's a rabbit, there's a monkey, and that's, that's all I know. Year of water rabbit is going to be a gentler year. We'll have time to take a breather. We've been in the tunnel for the last few years. The light is getting bigger now, says some person chow. Because they have water rabbit, they have fire rabbit. What a mess. Anyway, that's enough of that. Because I'm not that interested in it. I'm more ma- interested in mass murder in California. Not that I'm interested in it, but it happened. In Monterey Park. I've been to Monterey Park. I've been to... I eat dim sum probably in Monterey Park. Which, which is the Chinese brunch thing. Where you eat chicken feet. Mmm. <laughs> Uh, at least 10 people are dead. And at least 10 others hospitalized, according to Kami Nonsense reporting yesterday, after a mass shooting, they call it a mass shooting, it's a mass murder, in Monterey Park, California, Saturday night, according to LAPD. Oh no, LA County Sheriff's Department, not LAPD. I think I hear the cops right now. And... Sure enough, okay, so you, heard, you may have heard the report. If you didn't, go check out the Jesse Lee Peterson show, first hour. It was just like a, they suspect the person who did it was a 72-year-old gun male. <laughs> they call him gunman. But if you're not a, you're not a man if you're murdering. Um, and I heard he may have done it for love, but that's, 
beside the point, which is not love, but it's the, what people think of as love. And I saw a, a picture of the suspect. What they tell us is the suspect, right? We don't really know the whole truth, but... Um, and he looked like I might have walked by him over here at, uh, in Rosemead or somewhere. And I might have, 72 years old. And I, I was, I overheard from Nick, host of Nick's stream, producer for the Jesse Lee Peterson show, that his name is like a Vietnamese name. Is he Vietnamese or Chinese? Um, but some of the people who are Chinese in the SGV, San Gabriel Valley, where this took place, they went, they spent time in Vietnam. They fled to Vietnam and then they came to America. Some churches sometimes bring them here and then the church wants money from them or whatever or they want them to be involved, and then they become atheists or secular or liberals and don't even l appreciate the church. <laughs> and then they come here and then they call the white people racist, and then they vote Democrat by and large. And then they build all these McMansions, and... Well, these ones, the, the poor ones that I came, the ones that I came, grew up with, they packed in houses like sardines and saved their money and then bought and then bought and then bought and then bought and, then bought, and bought houses as families, big old families. But some of them come in here rich. But anyway, the point is, like, you can be, you can have a Vietnamese name, but actually be Chinese. So, uh, excuse me. Um, yeah, he, uh, he, according to the story, he killed himself after, amid the confrontation with the police. And he tried to go to, according to the story that I heard on the JLP show, he tried to go to another place and shoot up that place, but they wrestled the gun from him. And of course, JLP covered how, was it a hate crime? Maybe it was a hate crime. And of course, anytime somebody thinks hate crime, they think whites, even though blacks are the ones who disproportionately commit these so-called hate crimes, which we should abolish that type of legislation, because it's only used to divide and conquer and smear of whites and take power f for the federal government that the federal government doesn't belong having. The federal government bigger criminals than anybody. Or bigger corruption than anybody, I think. Oh, they can oversee the corruption over the local departments. No, because they're corrupt. Exceptions to the rule. So, here's pictures, though, right on cue of Governor Gavin Newsom. Beta Governor Gavin Newsom. He tweeted, Spent time in Monterey Park today, meeting with leaders and those impacted by this terrible tragedy. Oh, yeah. I got some reply. I captured some replies, too. This terrible tragedy. The strength of the community is... Excuse me, I'm... I ate a sandwich at the beginning of the third hour of the Jason Lee Peterson show. My, my fault. Um, the strength of this community is incredible. I'm reacting to that because that's so, that's such a, it's a nice statement to say, okay? But it's such a tacky thing. Like, what are you talking about? The strength of the community. I'm sure that there are some men who are respectable there. There's a man who he's talking to in this store here. I'll show that to you in a second. Um, maybe that guy's st strong in some way, right? But come on, the strength of this. Well, I guess because they're mostly Asian now, so there's, it's, you, it's not very diverse. It's all Asian. I knew an Americanized Mexican who lived in Monterey Park, too. So, okay, so there's some Mexicans there, too. No other country in the world. This is what Gavin, Beta Gavin Gruesome, uh, <laughs> tweeted. No other country in the world is Terrorized by this constant stream of gun violence. We need real gun reform at a national level. First of all, that's a lie because isn't it in like Mexico? Kind of shortly after I got, a high, got out of high school, I was hearing that they were averaging a body a day in some places. A body a day. Which may not sound like a lot, but that's... So called, that's your so called gun violence, which there's no such thing. And there's, isn't, wasn't there a bunch of murders in like uh, that other Mexican place? Uh, 
El Salvador. <laughs> Sorry, Mexicans and El Salvadorians. I know it's not Mexican. But El Salvador, lots of murders like crazy. Lots of crime like crazy. Oh, and it's because of America's fault. And uh, other, other parts of the world, there's always, there's a constant stream of violence. And by the way, these things happen in liberal areas where the liberals leave themselves defenseless, by and large. It doesn't happen at... Has there ever been a mass shooting at a gun show? I don't think so. Has there ever been a mass shooting at a gun range? I know there's been murders every now and then. The American sniper guy, I think he got killed by a guy with PTSD whom he was helping. Not the PTSD people are necessarily violent, but they've got an issue sometimes. But anyway, uh, of course, goes right to that. And they're going to keep on pushing and pushing and pushing that until they get their way. They've already gotten their way in so many ways. We don't even have a Second Amendment in many parts of the country. Remember the JLP interviewed a guy from, uh, who moved from, like, Colorado to New Jersey, and his mother was afraid of, for him because he may have been suicidal or something, because he went through a nasty divorce and moved. And he moved, and he called ahead to New Jersey, I think, according to the story, Todd, a- no, not, Brian Aitken, something like that. Something like that. He called ahead and said, oh, you know, I'm bringing guns, uh, how do I store it properly and all that? He did everything what he, what he thought was proper, and then the cops pull him over because his mom, his mom was worried for him, and then he gets thrown in jail with, slapped with a felony, and the fat governor, the fat rhino, who's, I like him sometimes. Um, the guy, from, you know, the New Jersey governor who hugged Obama. I'm blanking on his name, it's not important, but he commuted this guy's sentence but it was such an injustice. We don't have the Second Amendment. You, you know, the, the criminals have more rights than the law-abiding people who defend themselves. It's a mess. That's why you got to be smart and wise. But, yeah, okay. So, let's see. What did this... What, are the, what were the replies? Can you sc- scroll it down to those replies? Uh, let's see... It's too small for me to see <laughs> from here, but I have it here too. Um, oh, there's some, some, something else that was funny too. Oh, thank you, man. Uh, David B. Landis says, we need a national, oh, look at this. Sorry, kids, I'm going to say it. Useful idiot. Useful idiot is a technical term for a communist puppet, right? A blind following the blind. David B. Landis, telling it like it is, he tweeted, We need a national solution to access to firearms. Oh yeah, access is the problem. This 72-year-old, the problem wasn't his anger or the fact that he's in America, probably doesn't belong. Who knows? Maybe. Um, Controls in any one state alone are not effective because guns easily move from neighboring states. And that's what they say about Chicago, because Chicago and Illinois have very strict gun, anti-Second Amendment stuff. But they go from, they come from neighboring Indiana. So this guy is like, oh, we need to strict nationwide. What an evil person. Blind brainwashed sucker is what I mean. Evil too, that is evil. A male, a purported male is thinking that. David B. Landis. Is that a normal white man? Joe Bob says, glad you were able to take advantage of the photo op. I agree, man. This is just a photo op. Look at these pictures of this guy. Beta Governor Gavin Newsom. There he is, standing in a uh, shop, talking to a, an older man. That may be his, that, that may be the strength of the community. <laughs> that guy. Nice. I don't know, is he the one who took down the gun mail? And there they are in some, like, fancy slash personality list, character list, government building or something, community building, all talking. Very diverse. 
Oh, uh, there he is walking the street. The street's all littered up. I wonder if they had down there, if they had like a parade or some festival thing. I thought the Asians were supposed to keep, by and large, they keep stuff clean. But there's a bunch of trash. I wonder if people were fleeing the scene and left trash or if that's from a parade or what. But he's walking the street at night in Monterey Park. And by the way, did this happen? Uh, show this screen. Uh, this, uh, let's see. Did this happen? I saw this tweet from Citizen Free Press, and I think it got deleted, and I don't know if that, what that means. It was a video put out by Julio Rosas. Julio Rosas, who I think is like a Breitbart reporter, Mexican guy, upstanding young man, I think. Covers the news. Pretty legitimate journalist. And I don't know if this is accurate, okay? So, but did this happen? Cor- uh, correct me, guys. L.A. County Sheriff Robert Luna describes the handgun recovered after the mass shooting suspect, Hu Can Tran, H-U-U. Oh my gosh, I knew a Can Tran. But he was not 72. He was a good guy. He wouldn't, I don't think he would do a mass murder. He's a good guy. Talented wrestler. But anyway, after Hu, sus, shooting suspect Hu Can Tran killed himself. The weapon re- recovered, I'm describing as a magazine fed semi automatic assault pistol. <laughs> you ever heard of an assault pistol? It's a joke that they call it an assault rifle. What else, is, what else are guns for but assault? Rightful assault or wrongful assault? I guess you could call it assault, but not the cr- crime kind of assault. Assault pistol. <laughs> magazine fed semi automatic assault pistol. Did he really say that? <laughs> And maybe he was just stumbling over his- maybe he was just nervous. Maybe he's a pro-gun guy. <laughs> but anyway. He's can't tran now, says Ivana Spencer. Ha <laughs> ha! Forget you guys. Stop making fun of the Chinese and in Vietnamese. Uh... You mean a handgun? Also known as a pistol. The weapon we recovered was a pistol. It's a gun. A magazine-fed, semi-automatic <laughs> assault pistol. Well, congratulations for, to that 72-year-old Asian man. Not congratulations to him. I'm kind of mocking. Is it too early to joke, to make jokes? Um, for being able to handle a magazine-fed, semi-automatic assault pistol. Crazy. So that's that mass murder. Well, comparatively, compared to... What happened from those violent Asian, that violent Asian, which the other Asians stopped him. Good for them. I'm assuming it was other Asians who wrestled the gun away from him. If they wrestled it away from him, how would he be able to get the gun back and shoot himself when, with a standoff with police? I don't know. Maybe he had more. It was literally a Glock, probably. It says Rusty. <laughs> who knows? Um, anyway. In contrast, this largely peaceful protest happened in Atlanta, on the other side of the country, in the South. Does Atlanta even count as the South? It's just dirty, and isn't Atlanta even gayer than San Francisco? And blacker. Uh... Commie Nonsense Network reported six people were arrested Saturday night in, and I don't know what the update is, maybe that continued the following night, in downtown Atlanta during protests, meaning riots, that came in response to a proposed police training facility uh, and the fatal police shooting of an activist, agitator, I don't know, earlier in the week. And so here's the <laughs> clip 12. Finally, we're getting to a clip, guys. Largely peaceful uh, riot. Three-sided story tweeted this out. It's a Fox News local report. Fox, Fox 5, that is, not Fox News proper. Local Atlanta reporter calls the protest in Atlanta a largely peaceful protest as the police cruiser is on fire in the background. <laughs> Just very reminiscent of, you know, the people, CNN or whoever calling it mostly peaceful during the Black Lives Matter riots. 
of 2020 and 2014 maybe. I, they might have done it in 2014 with the BLM riots there. Anyway, here's the clip. Enjoy. Hopefully there's no cussing. We're taking you right now. You can see people running in opposite directions and you on see, the other yeah, side Eric, of that. Yeah, Tyler. Go I ahead. do want to... Yeah, Eric, we're far enough away. You'll see the officer right there with APD. He has uh, what appears to be zip ties. Uh, we're not for far enough down where we can't see if they've taken anyone into custody, but it did appear that they were ready to do that uh, to try to, uh, to try to calm the situation that's unfolding here. And as you said, this really a protest initially to try to uh, protest what happened on Wednesday here where, uh, I mean, they were handing out that vehicle still uh, up in flames here over at the at Andrew Young and Peachtree. And if you take a look over here, if you pan over, I want to show you. This is what they were handing out at that protest. So it was a largely peaceful protest where they just wanted uh, what they're calling justice uh, for to, uh, to, uh, for to, 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 to uh, so sorry. Uh, he, uh, and right now uh, you'll see, basically, they want uh, justice for him after the shooting that happened uh, when the Atlanta police and the different law enforcement agencies were raiding uh, the forest over there to try to uh, ca uh, basically clear out the forest after everything that was going on. Um, were all related to this, uh, it was Entrenchment Creek Park. Crazy. Oh, so he wasn't calling the riot largely peaceful. He was saying the protest beforehand was largely peaceful, right? But it's not r actually peaceful, because as JLP covered in church, and he, as he said this morning, too, that these Tortuguita, Tortuguita, Manuel Teran, longtime activist, um, these riots are nasty, angry, Accusation, that's violent language. It's at least hate-filled, angry language. Angry message, angry spirit. That's not peaceful. That's not peace. But anyway, physically peaceful, maybe. Largely physically peaceful, which means pockets of violence. Just like, well, sort of like the January 6th mostly peaceful capital protest. Largely peaceful. They were angry at what they felt was shenanigans, which I, of course, disavow. It was totally a free and fair election, the most secure in our history, according to the government, which never lies to us. Law enforcement officers, including a SWAT team, violently evicting protesters who had occupied a wooded area outside the center when they shot and killed longtime activist Manuel, Manuel, Manuel Terran. Terran who went by the name Tortuguita, Tortuguita, whatever. Is that like a tortoise, a little tortoise, something like that? Translate Tortuguita. The heck, it doesn't say it right away. <sighs> Useless. I'm complaining about Google. Never mind, it doesn't even matter. So, Forest Defender... Forest Defender. Forest Defender is the uh, is the liberal. <sighs> I'm poo pooing them, uh, environmentalist people, who didn't want this uh, forest outside of Atlanta to be taken down or something like that. So I wonder, I wonder if these guys who get riots over them would smile upon the riots and nasty people. I bet you, I bet you they kind of would, many of them. You know what I mean? Was there anything else related to this Atlanta thing? Let me see, let me see, let me see. Nah, it's, that's about it. Was it a Black Lives Matter type of thing? This guy was a Hispanic, sounded like. What a mess. <laughs> so let me tell you about censorship. Over at the World Economic Forum thing, which is happening right now, I guess, or happened over the last week or weekend or something, at the WEF, World Economic Forum, they're the ones who pushed the Great Reset. They, 
wanted to swoop in and save the world with the China virus, and they probably want to do shutdowns, communist global homo shutdowns in the name of the uh, climate change and all that stuff. They're the scum of the earth, just as many people are, right? The UN, uh, a UN person was there. I got this from End Wokeness, clip 11. At the WEF, UN regulator, a woman with, a, with an accent, issues a stern warning to Elon Musk. If you don't comply and regulate speech, the UN will issue sanctions, meaning punishment, and like, whatever. Try to, try to control you, right? Just like what they're doing to Russia and other things. Here is uh, them trying to control the, the world. Control freaks. Uh, police your speech. And they're not good people. They push the, idea, the fake idea of racism on America. They want to meddle their little fingers, the UN people. They did a report that, oh, blacks, human rights are being violated in America. No such thing as human rights. And I'm sure that there, I'm sure that there are a lot of rights be, being violated against blacks and whites and everybody. Especially whites, I would guess. And especially men, I would guess, because that's the, it's popular right now to hate and discriminate against whites and men. It's, it's, it's fashionable right now. Here is, and it's been that way for decades. Here is the uh, clip. Here's the woman talking, and then they'll, they'll have a little interruption because it's a news report. And I'll read that interruption explanation for the audio podcast listeners. And then I'll get to calls. Here it is. Uh, our message was clear. We have the rules which, has to, which have to be complied with, and otherwise there will be sanctions. Twitter? On Twitter? EU Commissioner for Values and Transparency speaks to Euronews about the Elon Musk Twitter takeover. I think that uh, the confidence has been weakened. And I I had quite high level of confidence when it comes to Twitter. I have to say that we worked with knowledgeable people, with the lawyers, with the sociologists who understood that they have to behave in some decent way not to cause really big harm to the society. I always felt that this this notion of responsibility was there. So this is what I don't feel from uh, Elon Musk personally. Mama! She wants to be mama of the world. Sickos. Nazi much? Asks Slam Free Poetry. <laughs> oh, come on. This is worse than the Nazis, right? Uh, maybe the Nazis wanted to control the world, too. Commie much? Globo, ho- Globo homo much? Make everybody comply with you. And meanwhile, like, they're violating the rights of the people who are telling the truth. To tell the truth. On Twitter they are, on all the different social media sites. The EU, oh, was that EU or UN? Did I call it UN or EU? Whatever. Transparency and something. You guys are saying EU. Might have been. Anyway. Makes me want to spit. Indeed it does. Surik makes Hake want to spit. I'll get my spittoon in a second. It's not important right now. I need to build up more saliva. She made my mouth dry. She's... Well, okay, she was mildly attractive. Old for me, but... You know, it doesn't... Let's not get into that. What is... It's not shocking. Everybody has to behave? Behave now! Shut up! Mom! (laughs) My shake spittoon is full. Okay. Stop it. Stop it, Hake. Somebody says stop it, Hake. Stop it, EU, UN, WEF. WEF almost sounds like a cuss, uh, cuss word. Anyway, that's their EU censorship. I'm going to get to another censorship story right now um, before I get to calls. Look at this. The UK. 
I'm glad we left the UK, I guess. Cyber Sig, S Y G H, tweeted this out. This guy talks about censorship going on. I don't know who this guy is, but he gave this ridiculous story. And all, all stories of, of attacking people for hate speech, in my opinion, probably all of them, almost all, yeah, probably all, are ridiculous. But he's giving an extreme one, where somebody was arrested over rap lyrics. Let's, clip 15 is the one. Listen to this crazy thing. In Russia last year, 400 people were arrested for things that they said on social media. 400 people in Russia. Obviously, this country is very different. How many people do you think were arrested in Britain for things they said on social media last year? Go on. Take a guess. I have no idea. 3,300. Really? Arrested for what they'd said on social media? Yeah. Really? What sort of things get you arrested? Well, one example I give in my show is uh, there was a young woman from Liverpool uh, called Chelsea Russell. Her friend was killed in a car crash, a 19-year-old woman. And she posted the lyrics of his favorite song on her Instagram, the lyrics. And it was a rap song, so the lyrics contained several instances of the N-word. Okay? She was arrested, prosecuted, found guilty, given 500 hours of community service and a fine, tagged... And for a year, she was under 8 p.m. to 8 a.m. curfew. Whoa. My goodness. In Britain. <laughs> In Britain. In 2018. Crazy, huh? Stupid TikTok. I hate that ending TikTok thing. Boom. Yeah. Shut up. Hey, he's easily annoyed. Uh, crazy. And yeah, she appealed, but for a year... She was, had a curfew from 8 p.m. to 8 a.m., meaning she couldn't go outside. She got this. She got sundown towned. She got sundown town for saying the N- for tweeting or Facebook posting the N word. <laughs> and I heard that it was a Snoop Dogg song, and it was covered in the news. And people are like, "Oh no, it, get the real story. It was made right. It was not made right." Oh yeah, she got it overturned or she appealed or something like that. But it never should have happened in the first place. They shouldn't have hate speech laws. Britain. <laughs> I want to say that word that I don't like saying. Really makes me want to spit. And I saw this tweet. I think I have this screenshot of this tweet. I don't know where I have it. It's somewhere in the folder. Maurice C. Hayes. Tweeted out, the Racism UK guy is the screenshot. Look at this guy! Okay, so this grown adult male purportedly tweeted, I don't know, maybe he was trolling. He looks light-skinned, so he might be radical enough to be this dumb. Sorry, kids. Um, adults. He tweeted in response to the tweet that tweeted out the TikTok video about the fake racism story. Arrest. I could think of a thousand different ways to pay homage or homage to my deceased friend other than posting lyrics to a song that has the N-word in it. Spare me the bush boop. Sorry, kids. People be using any excuse as a cover for their racism. <laughs> Can you believe this guy actually thinks like that? I'm not sure that this person actually thinks like that. Is that a bot? Is it a woman pretending to be a male? What is this person, Maurice C. A- Maurice Chase? Tyus? Caius? Caius? I don't know. I think it's Maurice C. Hayes. But I don't know. C, his middle initial. And I looked him up. He's like a, uh... I forget. I forget what I... I forget what it said about him. Let me click, click into his Twitter thing. Because I wanted to see what he said about himself. He's a creative strategist. Very creative tweet, buddy, if you didn't mean it. And if you did mean it. It's quite creative. Real estate entrepreneur. Oh. Brazilian jiu-jitsu practitioner. All those guys are liberals. Almost all of them. That's why he looks imitation. He looks manly, but he's thinks like a woman. My Muay Thai. Mai Thai. <laughs> he does Mai Thai. Muay Thai, all right. I feel dumb calling it Muay Thai because it feels like it should be pronounced Mai Thai. (laughs) 
Which is cool. It's crazy how hard those people kick. So, I'll spiritually kick you though, man. <laughs> I don't know if I was spiritually. Intell- I would intellectually, metaphysically kick you. <laughs> and Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu practitioner. Okay, sorry, I'm sorry. You're nice, but you're wrong. Be thinking that the- <laughs> he got a whole lot of, he got, this person got ratioed. I don't know, maybe he was looking for attention and replies. Because he got tons of replies. He got seven likes, four quote tweets, uh, oh, 27 likes now. Uh, let's see. 92. Four, seven likes, four retweets, quote tweets. Which means they didn't like what he said, probably. And 92 replies. So he got, get, what is that called again? Ratioed. Buddy, <laughs> my 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 tie that buddy, and he said he didn't just censor his bogus speech word. So anyway, <laughs> oh, you know what was funny when I was watching this video, and it's ri- this video, John Anderson dot net dot a u, is that Australia? John Anderson A C. Is the name of the TikTok uh, account that tweeted that that TikToked out that video, and I don't know if that's the person who was interviewing the guy, or my ties an alcoholic beverage this is on. Yeah, I know. I was thinking about that. <laughs> uh, is it a Chinese alcoholic beverage? It sounds kind of Chinese. <laughs> uh, anyway, this guy who did who t- who told this story with this accent. I literally thought that this person who told the story was the uh, suspect in the, I'm laughing, I shouldn't be laughing, in the Idaho stabbings. Is it Idaho? Ohio? In those stabbings. Didn't he look like the guy in the stabbings, the stabbing suspect? You know that murder that was not solved for quite some time? He's a college grad student. He looked like this guy to me. So I was like confused. Cernovich tweeted out calling it plot twist. I'm like, plot twist. Oh, and this guy was, so this guy was in the media. And he's talking about free speech. And uh, he has a British accent. He's the, he's the, I literally thought he was the stabber. Suspected stabber. But anyway. They all look the same, you know. <sighs> Let me get to a call or two, guys. So that's that censorship stuff. That's it. The EU and the UN wants to do on America, on Elon, based Elon Musk. (laughs) I'm going to read your super chats, guys. Free speech is hate speech, says EA24 on, uh, on, uh, Odyssey. Speaking of that, I gotta, I gotta get on, uh, the crypto report sometime soon here. Let me get to Terry in Detroit, Michigan. Been on hold for... A bit of time here, a first time caller. Terry in Detroit, how are you doing? Hello? Hey. How you doing? Doing fine. How about you? I'm good, I'm good. You know, I, I've been a listener uh, for a minute, you know. Um, I did take a break from you guys, you know, because life works oh, yeah. and all that stuff. I know how so, that is. Yep. Yeah, but uh, I don't like this guy, Joe Biden. You know what I'm saying? He's fake, he's a punk. <laughs> I don't like this guy. You know what I'm saying? You know what? You remind me of my former de facto producer, Dylon, who called in at the end of my show Friday, who was going to question me, because I think in passing I've said I find Biden to be somewhat likable, even though he's so evil uh-huh. and so dumb. Sorry, kids. But I, why do you dislike him? He's a deceiver. Yeah. I don't like guys that deceive. You know what I'm saying? I do. I I get you. A lot of conservatives and men and Christians do not like liars, people who lie. And, and that's why I have a problem with you and Jesse Lee Peterson now. Why? Because you deceived me. We deceived you? Yeah. How? Because I thought you guys were straight men. Oh. You're homosexual. We are, buddy. Oh. Yeah. Bye. <laughs> I had a feeling that this was a phony. You deceived me! Because this guy called in with, Biden 
stinks. But he didn't say stinks. He said the other word that, you, that kids shouldn't say. And sure enough, he didn't want to talk about that. He's trying to talk about, he, he's trying to smear JLP and Hake. What a deceiver. You, do you dislike yourself? Anyway, I didn't feel like talking to him. I felt like I should just hang up on him. <laughs> Caller want a chance to hate. I disavow. Caller way out of line. I agree, slam free poetry. Acting just like those very subversive. I've criticized the Jew blamers before who call in, hey, how come you never talk about the Jews? And they, like they, they snake their way into saying and say stuff. They don't just be straight up. Anyway. <laughs> Gross. What a creep. Indeed. But anyway, let's get to some super chats. Based America first with a super chat on streamlabs.com slash the Hague report. Three days ago, I don't think I read this one. Surprising absolutely nobody. The Supreme Court dog and pony show designed to fail at finding Roe v. Wade decision leaker. Yeah. Actually fails to find the leaker. Qui bono? C-U-I. Qui bono? I don't know that word. I'm going to have to look it up. Roberts and Sotomayor are both pro-abortion. Ah, oh, the hick. With the hake. Doesn't work. It's streamlines is hard to work with. But I like them. Roberts and Sotomayor. So John Roberts, the Rhino Chief Justice of the United States so-called Supreme Court, is pro-abortion? Roberts appointed the investigator. Convenient. Really, you th- John Roberts is pro-abortion? I'm hung up on that. Qui bono. Who stands or stood to gain? Oh, okay, so that's what that stands for. From a crime, so, and so might have been responsible for it. And I think that there's a the French word, right? Kind of like pro bono. Oh, it's Latin. Latin, French, same thing. It's not, if it's not English, it's Spanish. <laughs> I was in Germany one time. And because it was a foreign language, I just started to try to speak Spanish. I started to, like, kind of want to start to speak Spanish because that's the only foreign language I know. <laughs> if it's not English, it's Spanish. If you're not black, you're white. So that's what, hence all the attacks on Asians by the blacks. Uh, qui bono, to whom is it a benefit? A Latin phrase about identifying crime suspects. Yeah, no class in the world. Roberts is a woman. John Roberts, a woman. I'm going to I'm going to go out and call him a woman. If you think about it. Uh cuz he kissed up to the fake idea that same-sex marriage is a legitimate thing. And he kissed up to the idea, John Roberts, um that the Obamacare is a tax, and therefore it's constitutional. This is maybe before some of you guys' time. time. Nicola Four, yeah, thank you. Qui bono who equals who benefits? French would be qui bon. Oh, oh yeah? Okay. See? Basically the same thing. Not the same, Hake. <laughs> uh. Yeah, he, so he's like a woman, and... The, my point in calling him a woman, and also, of course, uh, Sotomayor is a female. She doesn't deserve to be called a woman. <laughs> Although she does kind of like uh, the based black Supreme Court justice. The, one that I, the only one that I think is a legitimate justice. The f- guy who's friends with JLP. Uh... Clarence Thomas, Justice Clarence Thomas. She likes him. So, so, Sonia Sotomayor. Because he's a likable guy. He's a good guy. 
thoughtful, considerate. But anyway, women in government make the government less reliable because women are not reliable. And female-minded liberal males like John Roberts, not reliable. Why is it called female-minded? I'm having flashbacks to my debate with uh, Stardust about are they making men more effeminate? And they are. They really are. They're making men more effeminate and women more mannish. And neither one of those things is good at all. For either of them, setting them both up for misery. And to be uh, appear ugly to one another. Because who likes an effeminate male? Nobody. Except the twisted, perverted mind of women who like men like that. <laughs> and males who like that. Hey, this is not what it is in French, LOL. Qui en benefie. En benefie. I knew that that was better, Nugget Man. I knew she was, or whoever said that to- before was wrong. Bon. <sighs> Thank you, Based America First. Yeah, very convenient. They don't care about the leaker. Oh, we're going to investigate. Just like Congress is going to investigate Biden. <sighs> Yeah, it'll, it'll only be effective when this, once the establishment wants him gone, which JLP is saying they do want him gone. <laughs> Terrible. Uh, another super chat from... Uh, man, there is a super chat that I did not get to from uh, Rumble. On Friday, I got a super chat on, from Rumble, and I didn't get to it because I saved everything for the end. Deuce Intra, D-E-U-S-I-N-T-R-A, gave a generous super chat of $5 on Rumble. Did you know that you can super chat on Rumble, rumble rumble.com slash the Hake Report? Hake is demonetized on YouTube, but not on Rumble. Hake, would you agree that being fierce is a noble trait among men? Yeah, I would, I think I would agree, but that word fierce has been so poisoned by Beyonce and these females who want to call themselves fierce. So, to me, that's not, the word has been poisoned. But anyway, he goes on. Have you heard of the phenomenon called uncreated light that many have witnessed? Uncreated light. I have not heard that, man. I appreciate the tip. Uh, uncreated light. Let's see what... Is that Tabor light? Light of Tabor? I don't know. Uh, but thank you. Appreciate that. Yeah, it's, it's good. There's a right kind of aggression. The liberals poisoned Hake's mind at one point in, uh, when I was in school and said, being assertive is better than being aggressive. But there's a time to be aggressive. Assertive means you assert something, but sometimes you got to be aggressive. <laughs> so, yeah, I agree. Uh, fierce, fierce, kind of similar to aggression. A fierce warrior. It's a time for stuff like that. So, yes, I agree with you, man. Thank you. And I'll, I'll have to look more into the uncreated light thing phenomenon that many have witnessed. I haven't heard of it, though. Thank you, Deuce. Deuce intra. Am I pronouncing that correctly? Speaking of Christian, I have some music to play for you guys. More David Meese. I really like David Meese. Uh, This is the first track on the album called... Well, it's Chronology. Okay, so it might be... I got it off of an album called, I bought it on an album called Chronology, which sounds like it might be like a best of type of situation. So it might be older. So anyway, but the track is titled, I grew up with this song, 70 times 7. That's how much, that's how many times Jesus told one of the disciples that he should forgive his brother who wrongs him. So here it is, and I'll be right back for hour two, guys. Hang tight, you musical Philistines. David Meese.
has no chains My memories have no mercy There's no one left to blame Wish I could force back the hands of time Right every wrong Grant me just this one last chance For it's gone, gone So good. Am I right? Even with the gospel choir effect, still good. David Meese turned it, little kid Hake into a passionate Christian because <laughs> he's so passionate and emotional. So good. Oh my gosh. Well, maybe that's not good, but. Uh, Flamenco guitar. Yeah, wasn't that cool? I thought I was listening to Nick on Nick's stream playing guitar over the uh, cool music. Tim Scott, the real Tim Scott, not to be confused with the rhino. I'm ready to put on my Jordash jeans. <laughs> Somebody, oh, more janky Christian music. Ugh, says uh, Surig X. Um, so, somebody said something else about Jordash. And D DK, no, no, BK, DK is Donna Karen, BK, British Knights. <laughs> the uh, people used to wear those shoes, right, BK? He sounds like Geddy Lee of Rush, except better. 
Hank has run out of good music. God save us 70 t- 77 times. This song is deep. I agree. Math rock? You think that's math? No, it's, is it math rock? Maybe it's a precursor. 490. Oh, yeah, 70 times 7 is 490. 4 plus 9 plus 0 equals 13. Well, of course, 13. The person who quoted Jesus, Illuminati, confirmed. 90 Pound Wuss is greater than all other Hakes music. Raymond Eleven says, I feel like I'm on hold for the dentist. Well, just wait till the last track of today, till we play that. It's going to be, it's going to sound like, I'll have to think of it later because I thought of it this morning. Oh, it's bugging me. Didn't like this song, says Digitus Extractus. But anyway, um, thank you guys for bearing with me through that beautiful music. I got to get to more stuff. You can call in 888-775-3773. Do you want to hear from a pro-vax nasty person in Canada who says, oh, out, about? I feel like those guys don't know that how dumb they sound. <laughs> Is it mean to think of like an accent as making a person sound dumb? And they're white, so I feel bad. But anyway, here's this person, this nasty person called pro... Well, I call him pro-vax nasty person. It's Dean Blundell. What a name. B-L-U-N-D-E-L-L. And I gather that he's Canadian. And he shares on Twitter what he calls a bedhead presser for the hashtag vaccine death, which of course I disavow, and hashtag vaccine injury ferrets. He calls you guys all kinds of names. And Joelle and I are criticizing you guys, but we're not in, we're not with this guy. We're not in bed with the bedhead presser guy, because this guy is nasty. And he makes assertions that are also, technically speaking, untrue. Um, but I feel like I understand what he's saying. But he's just the opposite end, opposite extreme. Uh, okay, so clip 14, about a minute long, and I hopefully I cussed, I mean, I bleeped out all of the cuss words. I'm pretty sure I did. So here's this white-haired young guy who's relatively young, talking like a jerk. Sorry, kids. Here it is. Little bedhead presser about this vaccine death hashtag that's going on and every news outlet like Rebel News and every mouth breather and every troll account and every religious fucking loser that's like, oh, oops, sorry, kids. Death, stay away, vaccine injuries. None of those things are true. Vaccine deaths sorry, don't kids. happen. Vaccine injuries are not a thing. It's all bullshit. Perpetrated Oops. by religious I I losers, bleep. fuck sticks, morons, Oops. alt-right, Dang. church groups, Damn. lobby groups, dark web, Mike Flynn, Rebel News, Pierre Polyev, conservatives, but mostly just super assholes. And yeah, here's the rub. All late. No one talks about the 48,000 dead Canadians over the past two years. Not one. That's how you know these guys are full of shit And don't value yeah, human life. So fuck off with your vaccine death, vaccine injury stuff. You don't value human life at all, which means this is just an operation because you fucking losers are dumb and scared of needles. No one cares anymore. Go f*** your hats. So I apologize. The begin- I didn't realize he cussed so much at the beginning of the clip. I skipped to the end because I remember him cussing at the end. Children, ladies, I know the ladies cuss more than, more than this guy maybe, but ladies, some of you guys don't, right? Nice. Well, even if you don't, some of you guys don't even care to he- if you hear cuss words or not. But we don't like this here on the Hake Report. <laughs> uh, so I apologize for, I didn't catch the cu- all the cuss words. I did it in a rush. Shouldn't be rushing. My bad. Uh, but this guy sounds like he hates the religious people and conservatives. Doesn't he f- sound like he hates them, or am I assuming? Or would it be safe to assume? that Just his way of talking, I just get the sense that he's full of hatred. And yeah, it's snarky, he's like half smiling, like maybe trying to troll them, but 
attacking Rebel News, which is the supposedly like the British Breitbart or something, middle of the road, s- center right, something like that. Yeah, this is a family friendly show. This guy's not a family friendly person. <laughs> But he doesn't care about human life. Okay, so on behalf of the people who are asserting vaccine deaths, he said it doesn't happen. I think what he means is rarely does it happen. It's not a common occurrence. I think that's what he's trying to say. And who knows? But he's making the claim, I guess, what is he saying? 48,000 Canadians died over the course of this scamdemic? But the people who are criticizing the vaccine thing, maybe they don't know about the 48,000. Maybe they don't care about the 48,000. Or maybe they don't believe that that 48,000 number. How about that? Ever think of that, buddy? Because he doesn't seem to care about the people who are injured and hurt by the vaccines. And there are rare cases. I think everybody admits all the real rebel is Canadian. Yeah. Rebel News is Canadian. They're pro-Trump. Did I say they're the Canadian version of Breitbart? That's what I meant. But anyway, uh, he doesn't care about the vaccine dead, and they don't care about the China virus dead, because they don't believe that the China virus died, and he doesn't believe that the vaccine died, but he's just being nasty to them. So does he care? He doesn't come off like he cares about the 48,000 dead either. He's just being nasty. He just cares about being nasty to them. Because there's an audience, partly because there's an audience for that. Because I doubt that much of his audience are the vaccine critics. I think most of his audience are the people who hate the vaccine critics. So he's telling them what they want to hear. It would be like if I were to be constantly only talking about Jews to you guys. And not that many of my audience are Jewish people. I talk more to the flat earthers, because most of my audience are flat earthers, vax skeptics, and uh, Christians, some Catholics, a lot of whites, many blacks, uh, believe it or not, ladies, and even children. I talk to you guys. And I do talk about the black criminals, which most of you guys are not black criminals. But that's just, like, fun to talk about. It's entertaining. And I'm talking to this person. I wonder if if he watches the Hake Report. (laughs) But anyway, isn't that what JLP said about this, uh, about the protests? Just devils fighting each other. So true. What about NOLO? (laughs) Catholics are based. (laughs) Yeah, some are. Some are. So that is a factual statement to say... If there are two Catholics who are based, you can say Catholics are based. Generally speaking, they're not. But uh, I know two based Catholics. I know more than two, actually. Shout out to the Catholics. You're not normal Christians in, by American standards. But American standards, what are our American standards anymore? <laughs> we love you, Hank, says Christine over there. Shout out to Chris. Um, isn't that interesting? Of course, I think every vaccine, I don't know if every vaccine that has ever existed for any type of thing has at some point killed somebody, but I think that it's known that every vaccine, so-called vaccine or whatever it is, is understood and accepted that it's going to hurt some people. They call that acceptable collateral damage because it helps people more than it hurts. And I don't know, maybe this China virus vaccine did help some people. Because you know how Trump says the vaccine saved millions of lives. Maybe it did help save some. Or maybe millions. Who knows? (laughs) Um, And it also uh, may have uh, lowered people's... And I, of course, disavow this statement, but it's it's speculated, and I feel irresponsible not to mention it. Uh, Maybe it's lowered lowered some people's uh, defenses, also known as, what's that word? You know, your immune system. Lowered your immune system. So. 
you don't value human life. <sighs> Silly. So I, that was such a nasty person, I had to share it. I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have let that cussing through. I, I, for some reason, it really bothers me. How much that guy was, how much I allowed that hap- to happen on my show. Then out in the real world, people are like feeling bad for like cussing around Hake. I'm like, I don't care if you cuss. It's just I don't want to out on my show because it's a family friendly show. Children listen. Ladies listen. We want to raise the standard. So, Rebel News, religious people. I wonder if he's one of those secular types. I wonder if he's a Christian. By, uh, by blood. I kind of doubt it. Dean Blundell. But anyway, I saw that on Twitter. Somebody... I was checking out different, uh, some guy who replied to JLP. I clicked into his thing because he said something interesting. And that was, he quote tweeted that person. Hake cusses in Ebonics. I try not even to cuss in, like, Chinese or Vietnamese, or Spanish, or anything like that. (laughs) Uh, So, (sighs) crazy. But he's just, that person is just posing. And you know, when we get all puffed up on our ego about, oh, abortion. I was arguing with a friend of mine who's pro-abortion one time. I got sucked into an argument, and I remember at one point I got heated, meaning, like, angry, like, fiery, redheads are hotheads, because <laughs> I have red hair, that's what they say, redheads are hotheads, and I got mad, because he's all, it's a woman's choice about her body, something like that, I'm like, I can't believe you actually believe this n- dumb line, but he sincerely believes that, sometimes I get shocked, kind of like when I got shocked about Kyle, from Oklahoma, I think. The 250-pound man who said we should never hit a woman. Christian man. Fan of the JLP show and of Hake. He listens to us anyway. Decent guy, but he said you should never hit a woman ever. I'm like, it just, like, shocks me. You shouldn't be shocked at how people just repeat a line that everybody says. But I wasn't caring about the dead babies when I was mad at my friend for being pro-abortion. I was mad at my friend because I was, like, puffing up on the ego thing. Ego trip. That's what this guy is, and that's what some of the, the anti-vaxxers, which we love, and you guys probably have some legitimate points. Maybe you're right about everything, but I doubt that it's everything. But, um, same thing with you guys. Somebody said, in my, and, and then I'll get to calls, guys. Hang tight. And other topics. Somebody said in my Odyssey replies one time, because I posted my thing about Joel criticizing the Vax people. Uh, let's see. I wonder if it was here. No, I'm looking for it. But the guy's like, because I said I don't care about the Vax issue. I don't. Because whether I'm going to get it or not, I've already decided whether I'm going to get it or not, right? Or whether I got it or not. <laughs> I don't disclose that information. It's private. Uh, and anybody who I know who is going to get it or not, same thing. Like, I can't convince them otherwise. So, and it's, like, one of those things that it's impossible to know what it did to anybody. And, uh, in my opinion, especially since I'm not that interested in seeking out that knowledge, I only got sucked into information about black on white crime years back but since then I haven't really gotten sucked into searching out information uh was it here? no um I was looking for the video on Odyssey the guy's all so you don't care about the million or you don't care about the people who have died got it When I said I don't care, I said I don't care about the issue. Of course, I don't have any, I don't know, do I I actually care about anybody? I don't know. Do I care about the people who died? I wouldn't want them to have died, but you don't care about them either. And 
you're misinterpreting my point. And this guy trying to bash the, the conservatives and the Christians who are more worried about vaccine deaths than the China virus deaths, he doesn't care about human life, but he's accusing them of not valuing human life. I bet you that guy's pro-abortion for killing the babies. But anyway, uh, it's just a womanly... Now we have like a, a womanhood... How womanly can you beat Olympics about uh, who cares more or who's more decent? It's like a, how weak can you be? Oh, I have compassion for the POCs or I have compassion for the dead babies or, oh, you, you those liberals don't really care about women. We really care about women or whatever, you know, it's so phony. In the good old days, it used to be might makes right, conquer. But now it's competition of how, how, how well you can fake being compassionate and moral or something. You know what I mean? Hopefully I'm getting my point across. Maybe it's, it's not important. Let me get to a first-time caller, another first-time caller. Scott in North Carolina on the line. How are you doing, Scott? Thanks for calling. I'm great, Hake. Long-time listener. Nice. Thank you. First-time caller. Right on. And definitely understand your points that you're making there and agree. When I hear guys like that guy, that bedhead guy <laughs> yeah. talk about how great the vaccine is and every, you know, he uses very uh, derogatory language to say bad things about people who may disagree. Right. Um, you know, and he, he throws religion in the mix and he calls them, uh, mouth breathers. And, yep. you know, it's, it's sort of in a, its own way, it's a slur against people who have critical thinking and their own opinions. And freedom of choice used to be something that we valued in this country. Yeah. But it's ironic, too, that the same person would sit there and defend the idea of absolutely killing a, an, an innocent child in the womb. And, and even go so far as to even say it's not a human or it's not actually a baby. Um, and it, it just doesn't, it doesn't, what I feel is it's like a lot of moving goalposts. You know, on one hand, they say if you, if you want to protect grandma, you need to wear your mask, you need to do your part and stand six feet apart, and you need to get boosted and double boosted and wear three masks. And, but then they also, on the same breath, say, well, it's not a baby at the ninth month. That's the that's a choice of the mother, and right. and and really, what it is, it it just feels, from any logical point of view, like pure evil to me. Yeah, it is. It is pure evil, and it's a it's a nasty. He's just expressing hatred. That guy who that Dean Blundell guy, and I believe that he, I sus- based on a quick search, although it's kind of safe to assume, I think. It's almost safe to assume. If there's, a, if there's ever a time to be safe, it, where it's safe to assume, it's safe to assume that guy's pro-killing babies. Pro-so-called choice. Which I don't oh, know. If, it's, yeah. Yeah. Anyway. He, he, he's more than likely a pro-abortionist type. Yeah. And he calls everybody who disagrees with him a mouth breather. Yeah. He, he probably believes the Earth's a spinning ball going 66,600 miles an hour, too. <laughs> yeah, probably. Uh, <laughs> uh, but... <laughs> but it, either, <laughs> but either way. Oh, you're uh, he's are you totally uh, satanic? Are you are you the it, guy it, who? It you? might it might be slam free poetry yeah, right now. Hey. On the phone. <laughs> that's funny, man. Nice to hear from you. I was all jealous because slam free poetry called Nick Stream at least twice uh, over the yes. over the past year, and it never called Hake. Nice man. I, I'd love to call you more. But you got a you got a repertoire of callers that usually get in, and I, I thought, well, maybe I'd give it a shot today. Right on. I don't want to push the, the that issue too hard. I, I feel like you might have strong opinions, and that's fair. I have. But I I, <laughs> I did not believe the Earth was a uh, a flat until 2015, and I tried to debunk it. But without getting into the details, same people at the World Economic Forum and the and the globalists and all these so-called people that tell us about global warming and all these things, they all push this idea that the Earth's a spinning ball and it's going 66,000 miles an hour. And I just find it interesting that I, they, they lie about absolutely everything, but on that one note, good people like yourself seem to just go along with it. 
Well, I've never heard those guys say it's a spinning ball going 66,000 miles per hour. Uh, but I'm but I'm sure they do assume that as well. Um, well, they do call it global warming. Right. Yeah, that's true. And you know what? Uh, no, now they call it climate change because <laughs> they. No, that's true. <laughs> they want you. They want you. The, even the flat earthers to get on board. I guess they, that's why they switched the, one, the word. <laughs> I uh, love Jesse in his. Let me just say this before you cut me off and hang up on me, like Nick. That <laughs> I love that Jesse asks his questions in the hot seat. He asks them if it's a flat earth or a globe. Nice. And I think that's something deep about Jesse that he's willing to even entertain that as an honest question, and I love that about him. (laughs) Right on, man. You have the same story as one of my band callers, who my band, not for being a ball, not for being a flat earther, but I banned him for other reasons, but you have the same story as one of my other friends, former friends, maybe he was never a friend, uh, who, who, uh, said he- Believed it was a ball, like everybody else. Yeah, he believed it was a ball, and and then he took a level over to the beach. Even though he's in like the Midwest somewhere, he's like in a <laughs> landlocked flat area. So no wonder you right. people think that it's flat. But anyway, he took it to the sea and like took a level. And you're so close to the Earth, of course it's going to look level. For our purposes, it's sure. flat. It's relatively flat. You've seen my well, beach streams, right? You've seen my beach streams where I talk. I, I have. Yeah. Talk my mess. <laughs> nice. Absolutely. Well, yeah. you know, I, I get it. When it comes to so-called scientific experiments to, to decipher it, how about this? Uh-huh. Just know that they teach you from the earliest stage that the dumbest thing you could ever be is a flat earther. And then ask yeah, yourself that's true, why huh? they push that so hard. That is so true. That's that's because... Who, it denies because, God. Well, it doesn't. the Big Bang and everything, the globe Earth is, sata- is a satanic version of what God made, and that is... The Earth, it's our world, it's a flat Earth, whether, I mean, it's, it's meant to discredit God himself from his creation by giving us this idea that it's a spinning ball, a speck of dust in an infinite universe, flailing around haphazardly, we all came from primordial ooze out of nothing, and it all just magically happened by itself, and there wasn't a cr- loving creator God. That's all. Um... You made a point that they said this, the dumbest thing you could be is a flat earther, but the dumbest thing you can be is, is deny God. I think something, somebody who like rejects God is stupid. Something like that. In the, it's in the Bible. So it's a fact. I'll have I agree to look, with that. I'll have to Completely. look that up. But more of us deny God than we realize. You know how JLP has made the point, and it's so deep, that when you're praying from your intellect and emotions and imagination, you're praying to Satan. You're praying from Satan's mind to Satan's mind, and not to God. So I think a lot fewer of us actually believe in God and are a lot dumber than we realize. Meanwhile, we're judging the dumb liberals, and their dumb liberals are ju- judging the dumb conservatives. But everybody's dumb, and nobody really believes in God. Isn't that interesting? I believe in and, the Creator and God, the flat, and you're right. And the flat Earth stuff is such a distraction and irrelevant issue and uh i I think it's relevant because it speaks to the idea that we all come from this spontaneous uh see creation and big bang are the same thing one side is the big bang and it says satan says it just came from nothing Uh the other side is the religious side saying that it was a created earth and that all living all living things, every little detail of this world uh-huh. was created with love and by God. And science, the, the pseudo-religion of the satanic cult, they want us to just deny God's creation. And so they say it's just a spinning ball and it's bouncing around like a pool table in the middle of the universe. And there's so many ways to debunk it, but it really comes down to denying God. And God is real, and God made every single thing in this world. Well, thanks, man. Uh, I don't think of, I don't think of, I think ball earth and space and all that is so cool. It makes me, I don't know if it makes me believe in God because it's just a Satan physical thing. Satan loves it's to sell thing. you on cool. But cool, God made stuff that's cool. 
Yeah, but Star Wars and Star Trek and all these things. Trek. Do you see the propaganda? Not track, Trek. Star Trek. Oh, well, see, you see, even you, Hake, <laughs> you, you, you've what? bought into this idea. It's cool to no, believe I'm not in thinking, this idea. I'm not thinking about Star Wars when I'm thinking about space. I'm thinking about, like, the, the massiveness of the world, the universe, and all that stuff, or whatever you're supposed to call it. Okay, well, you know about astrology, right? You know about zodiacs? I've heard about that stuff. Yeah, that's what I was talking about with the Chinese. Do you know Chinese. about constellations of stars? That's astronomy. Like the Orion? That's, okay, well, there's yeah, astronomy you... and then there's astrology. Okay, I don't understand that, but do you yeah. understand about constellations? I, I understand that there are constellations, yeah. Do you know the Orion constellation? I, I've heard of it and I've seen it maybe once. Okay. Now, if Earth is going 66,000 miles an hour and travels 584 million miles a year, how come the constellations in the sky that we see, there's no parallax, there's no deviation? They, all these stars are just a, 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 a grouping of lights that over time would change because of the traveling that we're supposed to be doing. They never change. And the North Star, the Polaris North Star, uh-huh. is in the center of the sky. And if you look at a time lapse of the Earth and the sky, of the sky above, the, all the stars in the sky rotate around the one star, the true North Star, the Polaris Star. Now, if we're traveling 584 million <laughs> miles an hour uh, a, a year, how is this even possible? Just think about it. It's impossible. It's, it's, it's mind-boggling. And they say, because well, I, it's just because you, the stars are so far away, but yet we can still see them. How? So you're telling me you can see so far away that this, this I mean, it's absolutely absurd, man. But that doesn't, I don't really understand how you proved anything with that point, though. Well, okay, if you take time lapse of the night sky, all the stars rotate in a circle. And no, they I get, all I get, the, around I get the what North you star. said. I get what you said, but I don't get that that proves anything it's just that you don't understand how the how the skies work i don't understand it yeah. well maybe the nasa government controlled lying psyop machine <laughs> can give us an explanation maybe copernicus but maybe and they the gave an explanation but you didn't understand it i didn't Could, understand how about trusting your <laughs> senses but how they, about looking at but it do, instead when of when they go- when they gave you an explanation did you understand it or did you ever read the explanation? I used to believe it, too. No, but did you understand it? I asked you if you understood it. Yes, they say the stars are so far away. That's why it works, because <laughs> they're so far away. That's their explanation. Nice. Well, I let's mean, talk later, the Scott. I appreciate it, man. Three million miles away. Don't be, so pas- that? don't be so passionate about this issue. Okay, well, hey, I'm more passionate about not killing babies in the womb. Right, but so. that that either. How okay. old are you? Well, thank you for thank you for your time, Ake. How old are you? Um, I'm 44. Nice. You smoke pot or cigarettes or both or neither? Uh, neither. Nice. Neither. Why do you have that voice? You have a voice that sounds like something. Maybe it's just a white man voice, and I haven't um, heard it much. I- I've got. I've had health issues. You want to know oh, okay. when I was no, 18? No, 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 no. I don't need it. You don't need to put oh, okay. out your business. Appreciate right. it, Scott. Good to hear from you, man. Thanks for slam no free poetry. You, Finally called Hake. Take care, man. Shout out to the chat. Nice. <laughs> All right, Later, man. Bye. <laughs> Doesn't he sound like? Actually, I know straight edge type of guys who sound like that. Maybe he used to scream. Maybe he used to be a punk rock singer. Anyway. um... Let me get to Rick in Maine, on the line. Rick, how are you doing? Not bad, my friend. How are you? Doing fine. There you go. How's the back going? The back is okay. I stretched a little bit during the long David Meese song. It felt really good. Yep. Got to keep on stretching. Yes, sir. That's a big one. That's yeah. That's a big one for sure. Um... <laughs> I just got a comment about that video you played here a little bit ago with that guy that was cussing so bad. <laughs> yeah. Good grief. What Did- a potty mouth. I mean, that kind of stuff. I wouldn't even put it on the show, you know. <laughs> yeah, no. With the I- young ones listening. 
I it, meant I totally meant to censor it. But no. it's but it showed such an ad it was such a blatant attitude and it was about a topic that oh. a lot of my audience <laughs> care about with the uh, vax thing. And so I yeah. wanted to present his side and point out that the other side doesn't believe what his side says about the deaths. They believe what they believe about yeah. the deaths. And they both are pretending to care about the deaths. Some of them may really. But he doesn't care about the deaths either. So I wanted to bring out that I wanted to bring yeah. out that point. Yeah. Just the ego of it. But you're right. I don't yeah. like I don't like the nasty that well that uh, guy's that, it's he didn't even make that, it sound cool. Some people sound no. cool when they cuss, but this guy didn't even sound cool cussing. Yeah. Terrible. Oh, that's, that's why he said it. <laughs> you know, that, that kind of crap wouldn't even make good fertilizer. <laughs> yeah. Good yep. I agree. That's 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 terrible. You know, if, if I when I was being raised, if I got caught with one cuss word, uh huh. You know, it was either going to be one of two things, a bar of soap or a switch on the <laughs> side of the road. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, my mother was quick on the draw about giving it to you, too. You know, what's funny is they they stop cussing or they stop the fighting, but they can't stop the evil spirit of anger. And they yeah. cannot help but yeah. pass the anger down. So there's a whole bunch of well-behaved, angry, hate-filled people. Yeah. What a now shame. That's all that kind of language is, is just uh, glorifying Satan by taking uh, the place on Earth with their presence and spewing that kind of crap. Yeah. It's terrible. Uh-huh. <laughs> I've said this before, I'll say it again, just a reflection of their parents. I suppose so. I wonder what this guy's parents were like. Probably don't want to know. <laughs> I didn't even think about him as having had parents. <laughs> <laughs> I dehumanize him. <laughs> All <laughs> He's right, so mean. buddy. Thanks for the time. All right. Have a good one. You as well, Rick. Rick in Maine. Keep on trucking. Ooh, it's the garbage man's blues. That's a, that's a, uh, it's an old Sesame Street song. And I, it was off key. Dude's attitude was toxic, says Fred Johnson. Yeah. And uh, somebody Chow, General Chow, says, yeah, it's okay to cuss if you sound cool. I didn't say it's okay, but at least, at least if it sounds cool, then it's, has, like, in a way, more value. Is it okay to be racist if it sounds cool? Of course. Because <laughs> usually if you're racist and you're telling the truth and sounding cool, pff, double whammy. No, I don't know. I don't know what you're getting at. Shout out to General Chow. General Chow. Um, by the way, shout out to the Facebook crew. Are you guys there? My Facebook crew has been less active lately. I wonder if they're all banned because F Facebook does not allow freedom of speech. Just like the EU or UN or WEF or all three want to censor or sanction Twitter for allowing free speech. Because everybody has to go along with the globo homo stuff. Speaking of that, speaking of globo homo, making everybody follow in their ways of the world, let me go up to Hake News. I didn't get to finish this story. Uh, let's see. The, not the um, invasion into America. The Ukraine propaganda. I mentioned this at the end of Hake News, at the end of hour one of the Jesse Lee Peterson show today. This guy, uh, Western leaders, meaning anti-Western, Western used to mean like the white countries mostly, right? Maybe all. Are putting pressure on Germany to send Leopard 2 tanks, according to Commie Nonsense Network. Leopard, Leopard 2. So I guess Germany makes cool stuff, right? Uh, Leopard 2 tanks to Kiev, and they spell it, K-Y-I-V. They spell it the Globo Homo way. But I call it Kiev because I learned from you guys that it's K-I-E-V. Maybe I learned that from Nick, host of Nick's Stream, live on Fridays and sometimes Saturdays. Uh, after Ukrainian unchristian president Volodymyr Zelensky called on allies, so-called allies, I'm beginning to think the allies were not good. Evil versus evil. 
Axis and allies. The Nazis and Japan, Japanese were the evil access, Axis, and maybe somebody else. Um, and then the allies were the good guys. No, the allies were not the good guys either. Not one, maybe one, maybe some people. I'm sure there were very fine people on both sides, right? And violence on many sides. Anyway, Leopard 2 tanks to Kiev after Ukrainian unchristian President Volodymyr Zelensky call on allies to help booster his uh, country's defense against Russia's what I called rightful invasion. I was being a little bit facetious, but I really don't know. Is it ever right to invade? Is it wrong to invade? Is it just the way of the world and just (laughs) might makes right type of thing? Amid growing frustration at Berlin's indecision, because Germany has not given those Leopard 2 tanks to Kiev, over whether to dispatch its tanks to Ukraine, Poland's prime minister, big talking Poland, uh, is Poland, did Poland just recently join the, the NATO, or am I confusing them with somebody else? Maybe. Uh, and he's talking big, maybe because he's, one of the neighbors kind of closer to the action. Matthews Morawiecki, Mueki, whatever, criticized Germany for, quote-unquote, wasting time. You're wasting time. Send your tanks to keep on the killing now. For some reason, my voice is not strong right now. Excuse me. And announced plans to build a coalition of countries ready to ascend, no, ready to send advanced weaponry to Kiev. Quote, Ukraine and Europe will win this war with or without Germany. That's this big talking phony politician. I'm assuming that he's a phony politician, okay? Morawiecki said, quote, However, it is up to Germany whether they want to join the mission of stopping Russia's barbarism. I think that's being barbarian. Shout out to the barbarians. Were the barbarians based? Are those are the ones who took down Rome. Some of them. Or whether they will watch it passively, dooming themselves to being recorded on the wrong side of history. Anytime they say wrong side of history, I know... Okay, I don't know, but I'm going to say it. I know to be on that side because wrong side of history is usually what's morally right. Usually, you know, like, oh, want to be on the right side of history. I'm for same sex marriage. No, that's not what's right. Right side, right side of history, meaning like the winning side, meaning like the, the propagandist unchristian side. Is that what side of history you think is the right side of history? Stupid. Sorry, kids. So that, that's your daily dose of Ukraine propaganda. Uh, barbarism is the belief in haircuts. Yeah, I thought of that too. Barbers? Barbers? They're cutting hair? And I've heard that some of the Russian people, maybe even Putin himself, wants to kill all the Ukrainians. It's a genocide. But don't they share some genes? Like, it's hard to tell. Isn't Ukraine basically Russia? <laughs> Kevin Howe, help me out. What's your take on this? To me, this is so phony. Volodymyr Zelensky. Help. Wait, I mean, he's... I wanted to share that with you. Oh, you, you're not giving war welfare. Shame on you. <sighs> Silly. It's ridiculous. The barbs did take Rome down, but Rome was like the U.S. today. Just letting the barbs in, says Rusty Smackleford. Yeah, I've heard stuff like that. The, like the Visigoths or something like that. These little, little Germanic tribes, or awesome Germanic tribes, I don't know, um, were... You know, Rome was very diverse, kind of like America. They lost, I, I heard from one of my former friends that the Romans lost what it meant to be Roman, just like America lost what it meant to be American. 
there's an illegal alien radical homosexual guy who with a Mexican last name because he's not Mexican, but he's the Mexican of the Asians, the Pacific Islander Mexican Asians. Filipino. Uh, he made this group called Define American. Just a shameless illegal in America. He was like a Washington Compost writer or something for some time, and then he came out as an illegal. America lost what it meant to be American. Oh, well. As JLP says, and as the Bible says, whatever's in the world, you going on in the world, you can be at peace. But these people want war. Want to keep the killing. I, I've said this over and over again about the Ukraine war. And maybe I'm preaching to the choir except for Kevin Howe. They want to keep the killing going. They want a war welfare. They pretend like we're about peace for Ukraine. If you were about peace for Ukraine, you would tell them to surrender already. And stop, stop enabling them. What's the problem if, if Russia gets Ukraine? They'll probably kill fewer people if they get it than if they uh, keep warring between each other. But I guess that one of the rhino politicians, I'm calling him a rhino, I don't know, but I'm pretty sure he's, he is. He was bragging that because they're funding Ukraine and sending all these weapons to Ukraine and training Ukraine, that is depleting Russia's military. Okay, Russia's military is weaker. What, do, what good does that do us? Our whole country's weak. Oh yeah, more evil is befalling Russia. How does that make us stronger? You know what I mean? Let me check for Super Chats. Shout out to the Scot- the Scots-Irish Marine. Man, we're letting everything in the military. <laughs> I'm just playing around, man. Uh, I have some more news to share with you guys. Um... Who really cares? But FBI investigators found additional classified material while conducting a search of President Joe Biden's home. I don't know why they call it President Joe Biden's home. It's Sleepy Joe Biden's private home in Wilmington, Delaware. More, even more, and stuff from when he was a senator. Yay. Who cares? Boring. All kinds of mess. And another uh, crime and news thing. The judge overseeing Atlanta area special grand jury that has been investigating whether our greatest president, Donald J. Trump, and his allies violated the law in their efforts to overturn the 2020 election results in Georgia. It's a long sentence. It hasn't even done yet. Has scheduled a hearing. The judge has scheduled a hearing for January 24th to determine whether all or part of the jury's report should be made public. Special grand juries in Georgia do not, uh, they're not authorized to issue indictments, so they can't charge Trump or whatever, his allies. Trump's allies, are they good? You know, because I don't like the word allies. Um, Why don't they call him Axis? Axis. Axis of evil. (laughs) Uh, They're not authorized to issue indictments, but the report could serve as a mechanism for the jury to recommend whether Fulton County DA, District Attorney Fannie Willis... Oh, gosh, who's this? Should pursue indictments in her election interference interference investigation. Fannie Willis, 51-year-old Democrat, born in L.A. Fannie Taifa Willis. Is she black? Who is this person? Let me see. Da-da-da. Looks black to me. Nice hair. Light-skinned. Mixed, maybe. I don't think I, yeah, perhaps mildly attractive. It took me a while because, because it, if you look at a picture of her, you can see where it might take me a while, depending on the photograph. Some pictures, you know, some people look, look fine at certain angles and in certain photos. But anyway, this, okay, yeah, 
Real justice. Ridiculous. Poor Trump. <laughs> poor Trump supporters. Poor Trump allies. No, I don't feel sorry for him. I appreciate him. Trump is the snake in that poem because he's, sing- he's cited some poems about snakes. Somebody in the chat is saying Trump is the snake in the poem. I don't think so. Uh, talk about politically motivated. <laughs> talk about. Po- I'm chuckling because somebody said the show should just be Hake reading graduate level material. And this is like fourth grade level, and I can barely read it. The- <laughs> talk about a backwards justice system. You all know this. It's a backwards sense of justice in the country where they're pretending to be about what's right and so they're going after Trump all hard and they're not about what's right they're about they're about taking down the the men who are about what's right where Trump was about what's right that's where they fight against him with you notice that I don't know why I put with at the end of that sentence (laughs) <laughs> you guys, and then you guys are not standing with them either. Zion Don put a snake on him, <laughs> Costin. Zion Don, indicating that, or implying that he's a Zionist and we shouldn't be supporting him. But he's, they're attacking him because he was fighting for what I consider to be election integrity. And he wants to be in power because him being in power is better for the country, which he loves, I believe it, than... Sleepy Joe or whoever's behind Sleepy Joe being in charge of the country. And then you guys are turning around calling him for Israel. Israel first Trump. So what? So what? He's still better for... uh, He loves you and you're just hating him. You know what I mean? Anyway. I guess I shouldn't complain. (laughs) Well, look at the alternative. Let me show you the alternative. I have another clip to show to you guys. Clip 13. This is a silly couple of phony politicians. Uh, Chuck Schumer and I think it's Hakeem Jeffries. Did they want to make Hakeem Jeffries the, the Senate majority leader or something like that? Or is it the Senate? What do we have now? I think it is. Uh, the uh, Speaker, no, the Speaker of the House. I think they wanted to make Hakeem Jeffries the Speaker of the House. The dumb liberal, liberals. And he's this black guy. Hakeem. Hakeem. And then he has a nice American last name, Jeffries. Hakeem Jeffries. I feel like I just searched this recently. Here's the clip of Chuck Schumer, who's not a Christian, by the way. Ugh. Hakeem Sekou Jeffries. I remember covering this just like a couple weeks ago, and I'm barely remembering it. I'm barely remembering it. Here's Chuck Schumer and Hakeem Jeffries having a totally candid, off-the-cuff conversation, very well, nicely taped somehow, um, that Chuck Schumer tweeted out last week, I want to say. And they're talking about all the good things that they're doing, I think. Uh, This is the alternative to Zion Dawn. I'd rather have Zion Dawn. Shout out to the Zionists. Uh, here's Hakeem Jeffries and Chuck Schumer, neither of which are Christians, in my opinion. Go ahead. But people forget, you know, we had seven big bills we passed in the Senate, and everyone says it was the most accomplished, historic Senate in 50 years. Yeah. Six of the seven were bipartisan. And I think the American people embraced that. Bipartisan. And, you know, that's been the reality that on issue after issue, particularly in the Senate, you were able to find bipartisan common ground. And then we were able to get those same bills through the House almost overwhelmingly um, with some Republican support, certainly on infrastructure and chips, on gun safety, uh, on marriage equality and respect for marriage, electoral count. At At the end of the day, finding common ground with the other side of the aisle to get things done for the American people is why we are sent to Washington. The number of people who called me after the gay marriage bill, (laughs) you know, the marriage equality bill, and said, you have made my Uh, life better. Wow, what a feeling. What a feeling. No, absolutely, absolutely. And of course, we'll have to (laughs) push back as you've done and we'll continue to do in the House. When the extremism rears its ugly head, we'll be tough uh, on that. And uh, while at the same time extending out the hand of partnership to figure out where common ground can be found. 
Wow, so genuine. Somehow they're wearing lapel mics. Lapel mics are sit right here on the on the uh, collar thing, whatever. So genuine. Bipartisan means evil. I like how he slipped and called it the gay marriage bill, even though that was gay gays pretending like they can be married and the interracial <laughs> protecting gay and interracial marriage. Chuck Schumer, and I didn't realize that Hakeem Jeffries is kind of a mumbler. Like, I don't know what's going on. Like, he doesn't move his mouth enough to enunciate. Yeah, common ground with evil. Clown world. Yeah, I'll take Zion Don, Israel first Don, Donald Trump. And what's wrong with Israel first? Really? He didn't really start any new wars, did he? I know he bombed Syria a little bit or something, or Iran or something. And then he got some retaliation on some of our troops, and they got headaches and some brain damage. But brain damage can just be a headache. Um, but some of it might have been worse than that. But anyway, by and large, like, Trump was a man of peace. Not so with these sleaze bags. Like, Ukraine never would have happened, and we wouldn't be blowing all our money to... I know that Trump increased the debt, but he increased the debt to build up um, the military again because Obama had weakened the military and Trump strengthened up the military. He kicked the, or tried to kick out the transgenders and stuff. But come on, be reasonable, you guys. Don't get hung up on your pet issues such that you don't have sense with uh, stuff. I get, yeah, the country's gone already, but. Trump didn't betray you. Anyway, some of you guys feel like he did. But I think that's dumb. Let me get to Justin and Chuck Schumer. Chuck Schumer got quite a face. Doesn't he have quite a face? (laughs) They're so phony. That breakfast looked so good. I'm sorry, Justin and Fullerton. I just had to comment on that breakfast. It looked good. Why aren't they eating it? You should be eating and not talking and then get out of the government. (laughs) <laughs> that's how that's how Hakeem Jeffries talks. Poor guy. Let me get to Justin in Fullerton, California. Justin in Fullerton, how you doing? Well, hey, good good morning to you. Hey, this is a pleasure speaking with you. But I have a quick question. Yeah, uh, I'm not sure if um, the underrepresented group, the Irish, were. I got I got to ch- double triple check these facts, but I believe that they were the first slaves that were brought to America. So does that mean that? You know, and I, I am Scottish Irish descendant. So does that mean we get paid slave, quote unquote, you know, slave reparations first? I don't know. And okay. technically, were they slaves or were they indentured servants? There, 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 there lies the deep question. Indentured servitude is that uh, slavery or yeah? I think I think it is. I think it constitutes slavery. Sure. Just for like seven years, though, right? Something like that. Indentured means like you're in debt. Indentured servants. Is that what that means? I don't know. Because you people were, like, all poor. You got a potato famine because your land was full of sin. I made that part up. But uh, I don't know. I don't think there's anything necessarily wrong inherently with slavery. I don't see what's so wrong about slavery. You guys were taken care of. You You got your pay. And the people who are the descendants, they owe us. Because think about how much crime came out of the Italians. And even more, maybe, with the blacks. So they owe us. And, like, their people raise bad people. Uh, you know, the single mothers. Raising the thugs. And the Irish are Catholics. And the blacks are their own fake kind of Christianity. And they're communists. Yeah. I don't... I don't not for... They owe us reparations. <laughs> but anyway, I get your point. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if the Irish are included at all. all right. With all this talk. Shameful. Well, they are underrepresented, and it's but nice your but your skin color is not stigmatized, <laughs> like the black skin color is stigmatized, according no, to no, MLK. Some people are over melanated, I believe, and some people are under melanated, and whatever that means, your your melan melanation or something doesn't really matter per se yeah. to uh, a real human. But uh, I, you know, you know, somebody accused me of doing the edge lord thing. I sincerely don't see what's so wrong about slavery. 
You're in slavery today. Yeah. Anyway, thank you, Justin and Fullerton. Good to hear from you, man. I didn't know you were Irish. That explains a lot. (laughs) Anyway, (laughs) take care, man. Scottish Irish, that's right. All right. Oops, I don't like that click sound. I I should have been a lot quicker on that. This is a longer song, guys. Now is the time. This has been the Hake Report. David Meese, are you ready? And this sounds so much like... I'll be around. You know that song? Here it is. Enjoy, guys. David Meese. 